Well, what a collection of period English and Scottish ironstone and earthenware china we've got to show you this morning. This is a haul that came back from a trip we did down to Dis in Suffolk yesterday. And this is bits that we brought back from us that we just couldn't resist. Let me just run you through some of these brown and white platters. Booth's pompadour platter sets. And these absolutely beautiful grey and white period. Very early pieces. So let's have a look at some of these in more detail and just run you through. Let's start with the earliest, most modern pieces, which is this red and white set here. These are pieces of English ironstone transferware printed, made by Palissy during the probably late 1950s through into the early 60s. And these are Thames River scene series plates, bowls. There's a fixed gravy boat on a saucer. This is all one piece. A little half pint milk jug. A really cute, I've not seen one of these before, a little sauce boat in the shape of a gravy boat. Lovely piece. And then some dessert plates. There are various different designs on these and they're very nicely marked as well and in superb condition. Let me show you the China marks from Palissy. Thames River Scenes is the series by Palissy Pottery, as you can see, Staffordshire, England. And this is Shepleton Middlesex design showing the river. This one is Bray Bucks. And this one. Teddington Locks. They're all period stylized designs in around six, I think there were different pattern designs. It was made in a series of different color palettes as well. This is the red and white version. There's a blue and white and a gray and white and a brown and white version of this produced by Palissy. And as I say, they date from around 1957 through to late 1960s. Let's move on to a very different era in style. These are typical lovely pieces of early ironstone. Not Staffordshire, not English. This is Clyde Pottery Company. So a Scottish manufacturer and they date from, well, as early as 1819 through to the latest around 1850. This is the British River series of China made during that period. Different design on each one. They're not of any specific places, the British River designs. They were really stylized, pastoral, romanticized river scenes, including ruins and castles, grazing cattle, beautiful semi-floral, but this quite individually designed border pattern. Not seen that before on anything. These, as I say, are very early pieces of English ironstone. And we've got a pair of them. I think the largest is probably a 14 inch and the smaller one a 13. Typical size and shape for the period of English ironstone. Lovely pieces, extremely rare. The only other place we will actually find these, even looking online, is in uh, museums. So incredibly rare. Let's move on. Booths, the Pompadour. Beautiful. Chinois stylized pattern, really, Pompadour. A bit of combination of Chinese rose and a few other designs gone into this. Dates from around 1930s. Let me just show you the China marks. There is some staining on these platters, but they're a beautiful large set of five. Largest one's probably around 16 inch, I think. And the other two around 14 or 15 there. There is some damage on these, but for display, they are absolutely superb. Lovely booze, the Pompadour China marks, booze indent stamp, impress marks, and as a set for display, absolutely wonderful. Five or six pieces of lovely English transfer where printed and the final sets that we managed to purchase Tilson's just look at these grey and white English ironstone 
old ivy globe star china marks. Till and Sons dates these to between 1861 and 1891, after which England was printed on all of their china marks. So that's why we can be precise within that date range and just look at the volume that we actually purchased here. Dinner plates, dessert plates and side plates. A lovely set. It's such a delicate, beautiful design. And in very marvellous condition for something that is manufactured in the 1870s or 80s. So, quite a haul. A lovely range of different styles, patterns, colours. But English ironstone, when I see it, I just can't resist. I do have to purchase it. These are going to be listed gradually. Kate's got to decide which ones we may be keeping for the new barn. The grey and white, particularly on a marble surface, is going to look spectacular. Do love grey and white china. It's just something about it. It goes so well with. Just let me show you these other pieces in my private collection, which we will probably keep. I just love this stuff. It's so English, so period. And when you use one of these, you really do know that you're eating off a piece of history. This is Dolphin from around the same period, 1860s, 1870s. Got a platter in that as well under this stone there. Just let me show you so many platters that we use on a regular basis in this house, but that is a thing of absolute beauty. You can't go out and buy that easily because there's so few surviving. So part of our private collection, but the grey and white I love and it's something I've collected very gradually so when I come across a piece or a set like this I know it's only going one place and that's home with me. Thanks for watching.